Good morning, friends, and welcome to the pre-market review from the advisory desk. Uh, today, let's discuss about some global uh, news and updates. Uh, yesterday, the markets were closed in the U.S. and European because of the Christmas holidays. Uh, First, being a holiday, uh, all the otherwise nation global markets were closed. Uh, but today, uh, the second Jan, and the Asian markets have opened. Uh, Hang Seng is up by almost, uh, say, about 0.1 to 2 percent, and uh, Nikkei is up by almost 0.5 to 0.7 percent. Uh, so it's been uh, fairly trading flattish. Uh, it's been kind of the first day of the new year uh, starting to work, uh, which will take time. Uh, today, the markets, uh, U.S. markets will open. Uh, the data says that it will open positive, and Dow will maintain its, again, the winning streak for this year as well. As all the data coming in from the U.S. economy side uh, has been kind of uh, better than estimates so far. And it also shows that today, uh, this is January, and it will be the first month uh, the bond buying program curtail will begin by $10, $10 billion. So out of 85, uh, they will kind of come out with $75 billion of bond buying instead of 85. So we need to take in uh, watch on that, uh, how it affects the emerging markets as well. Uh, Friends, uh, on the FIR flows, uh, yesterday it was uh, provisional 309 crores positive for FIIs and uh, uh, domestic mutual funds were almost uh, 290 uh, negative. So it was pretty, very, very lackluster day yesterday for the market uh, and nifty volumes were kind of almost the lowest we have seen in the last five to seven years. So. It was a really dull session. Uh, friends, now I'll hand over to Sadna, who will take it for the derivatives view. Good morning, friends. Let's have a view on derivatives. From past couple of trading sessions, we have seen that due to lack of fresh triggers in the market, markets are continuously trading in a narrow range. But yesterday's session, we have seen that for second day in a row, market players have accumulated long positions as around 1.13 lakh shares were added in open interest and Nifty Futures premium increased significantly from 50 points to 56 odd levels. On the options front, PCR is also hovering between 0 0.84 to 0 0.85. But in yesterday's session, we have seen that call option has added more number of shares than put option which is clearly visible in the options activity. As we can see, call strike of 6,400, 6,500 followed by 6,600 also has seen a good number of activity in open interest and on put strike of 6,200 and 6,300 has seen a good activity. Overall, our bias for the market is positive as we are trading above our weekly VWAP of 6,300. Our intraday support would be 6,340 and resistance would be 6,395 and 6,420. And FIS for net buyers of approximately more than 500 crores in yesterday's trade in future and option segment. From intraday perspective, one can go long on Hindalco with a stop loss of 121.20. Thank you. Continuing back with the MID ideas update from the advisory desk, uh, we'll get you the kind of uh, the stock updates as well as the other news updates. Uh, on the M&M stock update, we have automotive sales decline uh, in double digits. Tractor sales has maintained a kind of the strong momentum or the growth we can say for M&M. As we can see, the automotive sales declined by 13 percent, YOY to 39,611 uh, units. Uh, while on the other hand, the 15 percent YOY growth was seen in the tractor sales. So. The savior again was the agricultural side, uh, which saved again for uh, the m and Even the domestic kind of uh, segment grew by 19% YOY. Uh, exports declined 25% on the YOY basis. Uh, Maruti Suzuki sales also declined by 4% to 90,000 approx units, uh, while the domestic market grew uh, kind of 6%, uh, which is really base nominal. Exports again declined steeply by 67% YOY to just 4311 units. Now, the export uh, uh, sales decline is kind of a major worry for the Indian uh, automakers. Uh, so far, they were supported by uh, the domestic growth, but the domestic sales have also declined as well as the exports. So that will again be a big issue for the auto industry. Other news, uh, Bombay Bullion Group writes to regulator FMC on interest, uh, kind of 5% of MCX, uh, which is valued at 1.25 billion rupees. So they are the one of interested buyers. MBSHA Inquiry Commission estimates are illegal iron ore mining. Uh, 
This is again an inquiry committee uh, which says uh, that the illegal mining has set 60,000 crores, uh, which is huge. Uh, and has said half of the profits from mine in the state should go to the local population, but the local population they get nothing. Uh, it also has ordered in 2000 fell demand of a CBI probe in this illegal mining issue, uh, which is kind of found evidence uh, by the companies uh, namely listed as the Tata Steel SR Mining, this, uh, that's a Billa, and the Sale. So uh, these are the companies that will definitely be uh, in the news. Uh, CCEA, that is the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, is expected to take a proposal of Power Ministry's um, MND Mega uh, Power Policy. Now, this policy is introduced in November 1995, uh, and if that does go, it will kind of be setting up large uh, power projects, uh, which will get a further impetus. Uh, also, decide whether Reliance Power's ultra mega power project uh, would be kind of exempted from providing more foreign lands to compensate. Uh, uh, for the loss of forest and to be acquired for the projects. Now, if this really does go through, it will be a big positive for our power. On the Adani group, uh, they have come again under the DRI uh, kind of lens, uh, which is the Revenue Intelligence Agencies as well as the ED, that is uh, uh, the DRI formally open for the overvaluation of all the capital goods, the projects that have their imported. Uh, the machines which have used uh, for the importing, uh, they have jacked up the prices of that. Uh, so that's, that's the allegations against them. Friends, the uh, stock ideas that we would kind of uh, go long on today for intraday basis is sale. Uh, domestic steel producers have decided to hike the prices of steel, uh, that is the HRC hot roll coils, by 1500 rupees per ton uh, because of uh, citing reasons as higher freight and input cost. Uh, Action long sale based on this, uh, 71 half, uh, stop loss target 77 on the upside. Next we have is Jet Airways, again on the short side, uh, the idea is Jet Airways, uh, CMP290, uh, again the oil PSUs, that is the OMC companies, the HPCL, BPCL, IOC have hiked the ATF prices uh, by 2.7%, this is the second hike in just past one month, uh, it is almost now at 76,241 rupees per kiloliter. Uh, which is closer to the lifetime high of 77,089. So this is a, again a bad news for the sector as well as the airlines uh, because more than 60 to 70 percent of their operational cost or input cost goes uh, for the for buying ATF. Uh, based on this action, short jet airways uh, stop loss 296 uh, and target uh, on the downside is 281 and 275 uh, on the intraday basis. Uh. Friends, uh, that's all the news and update we have. Uh, have a good trading session. Thanks.